Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com and I'm at the Canola Discovery Forum in Canmore, Alberta and right now I'm joined by Neil Harker at Canada Lacombe. Well it's great to have you back on Real Agriculture. How are you doing today? Really good. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, look, uh, you were on a panel uh, discussion this morning talking about canola stand establishments and some of the old rules do apply. We'll call them old rules. Yeah. Um, but there is some interesting things you brought up this morning in terms of things, getting growers to think about some things a little bit differently in regards to stand establishments. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start off with speed versus depth. Okay. Well, yeah, we, we've done quite a few uh, experiments on, on comparing uh, depth of seeding with the speed of seeding. And we've had them both in the same trial, and so we know uh, which one's more important. And over the years, we've, we feel that depth is, is the biggest factor. Uh, now, the, the complicating factor is, is that if you go really fast, well, then the depth can change because the back ranks of the cultivator will throw more soil. So uh, speed does influence depth in some ways, too. So, well, I think some of the trial results you show some of the pictures, it really shows that uh, just focusing on speed, but you know, say you, we're going to go super slow uh, and sort of foregoing the focus on depth, you're really not... There's no gains being made whatsoever. No, that can be problematic. I mean, if you're down uh, two inches or more with canola seed, a tiny seed like that, it doesn't matter how slow you go, they're going to have a tough time getting out of the ground. Yeah. So, well, some of the focus now on precision agriculture, you know, we talk about precision planting and those kinds of things, we, we've seen some growers really focus on bringing uh, seed population or seeding population back you know, to one and a half pounds per acre, some, you know, some pretty low numbers compared to where we were at one time where we, a lot of guys were seeding closer to seven. Yeah. Do you have concerns in that area? Yeah, I have a lot of concerns with that. I think uh, there are a few factors. Uh, one of them is uh, people have been using different planters and going back to discs and where you can get a little more precise depth control and a little better seed placement sometimes. Uh, but also, in at the same time, in the, over the last two or three years, especially in 13 and 14, we had really excellent soil moisture conditions. And so they did all those studies under really excellent soil moisture. Then you come to a normal year and uh, all the great results uh, turn to dust. Yeah. So uh, I'm a little worried that once we come under more normal conditions that these really so low seeding rates are gonna hurt us. And the reality of that though is that it's kind of the story of this year as well, right? We, I talked to Murray earlier, and he was telling me about how, you know, really about this year, we need to forget everything. Um, <laughs> some stuff worked that shouldn't have worked, and, and that's just how it goes. But are we, are we changing our view in terms of canola stand establishment, in terms of what, how many plants we do need in, that, in a good plant stand, or is it really the same rules apply? I think it's pretty well the same rules apply. We, we would like to see seven to 10 plants and uh, a minimum of five. If Once we go below five, we think we're losing yield potential in this area. Now, people get strange ideas because they'll go to Australia or China or somewhere where they grow a lot of winter canola or even Europe. And uh, there they're targeting two or three plants and it works better in a winter canola situation. So then they come here and try that and it doesn't work as well. But yeah, we're, we'd like to see at least five plants and, and an optimal of seven uh, plants. And then, then we've got uh, room for flea beetle damage, we've got room for frost damage, and uh, uh, root maggot pressure is less at higher populations. So there's all kinds of reasons why you want to go there. Maturity is quicker. Uh, you get uh, through the flowering period more quickly, where you, that's where the temperature stress is. That's one of the biggest yield uh, impediments for canola is those uh, days over 30 degrees during flowering. And so if you can shorten that period up, uh, the stand is what gets you there. Yeah. It, what's really, really interesting about the whole discussion is that we're really having a hard time convincing ourselves uh, about some of these some of these rules. Like, uh, you know, we, so we've seen for a long time that we're always trying to push growers to have a certain, establish, certain stand establishment. It seems certain pieces of the grower population no, 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 it can be way less. Why do, you yeah. think we're, why do you think that happens? Well, I don't know. People like to believe in magic, I <laughs> guess. Or, 
or they like to feel that they're special and they can do things differently and indeed some can some that are more careful and uh, they know their soils really well you can push the the limits a little bit uh, but some of the limits they're talking about are they're pushing a little too far you know going down to one and a half pounds per acre you know it's not going to give you seven plants in fact it can't unless your seed size is well below two grams per thousand which yeah. is about half the normal seed size. Yeah. Well, it, what's really, when you go to a field and you actually look at what five plants actually looks like, yeah. it, it's, it's pretty skinny. Yeah, it's not that much. Yeah. yeah. And so when you go less than that, not only does it look skinny and it delays maturity and you might get more green seed because you get later flowering and all that, but then you start talking about another herbicide application because the canopy is not closed. So then you're putting more selection pressure on for resistance, you're adding herbicide costs. There's just so many reasons for you why you want a good stand, and it's not all yield. It's not always yield, it's a lot of things. Uh, you, you talked about how you and Jay Wetter uh, place Smarties out in the field to show growers the, the proper amount of uh, place seeds uh, per foot. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, well, it was Jay Wetter's idea, actually, and he, took, he actually uh, simulated a, a square meter, and that, so we took it out to uh, a big, bigger, much bigger square than that, and we placed some, actually, they were blue M&Ms. I said smarty, they were M&Ms. And uh, so we actually placed those blue, because canola seed's often blue, on the ground to just to show them what that would look like in terms of, of what they should be seeing in the field. And it what was the reaction? <sighs> Well, I think they liked it, but I think they're a little shocked at uh, sometimes of how many blue seeds they needed to get the, the stand up to where they needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Harker, thanks a lot for joining us today, and we'll talk to you again soon. No problem.